I had a chance also, it was a surprise for me, 2018, um, it was a celebration of 80th uh, birthday of uh, President Kuchma. It was uh, uh, Kvartal was on the stage, and surprisingly I was invited on the stage. It was some kind of interview with me uh, in some unknown language, what was some exercise, uh, not, not easy. But after this exercise, I felt for a second that if ex-president can be on the stage as a showman, maybe the showman can be one day a president. And uh, of course, that is not so easy way, like in my case, but, but it happened. Uh, president Zelensky left the group, and I thought uh, that for Kvartal Divanostapiati, extremely talented group of people with great ideas, that is very, very difficult time. Because uh, how to make jokes of colleague, of friend, of the man who established this group. Uh, they, they tried to find own uh, way. I think it was okay, but probably very, very uh, much more difficult. And of course, uh, no, no of us expected that one day we will have a problem because how to make jokes, how to be such show during wartime, how to use this uh, weapon as, as a joke, as, as a, um, a laugh, as a strong weapon in this fight against aggressors, etc. And I want to tell you that uh, last six months, Kvartal Divanostapiat, quarter 95, they uh, are organizing very, very wide material and humanitarian help, assistance for soldiers, for refugees, for citizens of front cities. And uh, of course the question is, and we will see it, how, how to work uh, during the war time and now after this short introduction, I would like, may I? I would like to introduce on the stage Yevgeny Koshevoy and Alexandra Mashliatina. Please. Oh, I remember you. We had, we, we, we had this interview, yeah? yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Hello. Nice to meet you. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you very so, much. Uh, I have one. <laughs> Excuse us for the English that you'll hear. And, and we are very sorry. We ask for your applause. Today we would like to debate a little of humor in times of war. Yeah, joking about the war is unacceptable, but during war we cannot survive without humor. And we know what we're talking about. Since the 24th of February this year, we have given more than 130 concerts for our soldiers on the front, on the whole, in hospitals, on the border. There have been many performances for residents on frontline towns. Yeah, and not once um, we heard that our humor is poorly timed. On the contrary, they have only been the words of gratitude and confirmation uh, of the fact that humor is an outlet, an uplift of military morale and extra armaments. But humor has really become one of the forms of the national resistance of the Ukrainian people, the very weapon which is delivered in unlimited amounts and without stopping. Humor and courage are part of the Ukrainian DNA, on the 24th of February, in 4 in the morning, the first rockets arrived. But by 4.30, the first memes arrived. Yeah, really, memes become the form of humor which helps uh, to distract you from the news, you know, and support many people mentally. Memes were the first reaction to the main events of this war. Something like this. <laughs> This one is my favorite. <laughs> NATO explains to Ukraine why they can't close the sky. And here is the Ukraine. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to be more interesting. Where is so how are you doing, guys? <laughs> Give me some noise. <laughs> 
Uh, naturally, uh, these memes brutally trolled Russia. <laughs> and of course, one of the main heroes of the huge number of memes was President Zelensky. To do until. <laughs> Don't be so shy! <laughs> uh, you know, despite all the stress of the situation, uh, Zelensky himself finds time for humor. For example, with the help of uh, CGI, Putin was depicted as if he was surrounded by other people. And at the next moment, his hand just passed through the superimposed microphone. Please. Wow! Oh my God, Russian technologies. Wow. You know, President Zelensky, uh, in his evening address, reacted to this immediately. Slava Ukraine. Yen. <laughs> Glory to Ukraine. Really great. Uh, you know, in doing so, he showed that even in situations like this, he has not lost his sense of humor, with which he was inspired even more confidence in Ukrainians. Having recovered from the first shock of war, the country has reacted with a huge amount of the humorous content. In bomb shelters, stand-up comedy sets started happening. On social media, parody clips have been appearing. Well, the Russians, I want to tell you some speech. I cannot speak uh, beautifully, but I cannot speak ugly as well. Bayraktar News. The Russians say to I, IAEA that uh, there, there are subtitles. Yeah, <laughs> I know that guy. People are making video memes. <laughs> there have been humorous songs which have raised uh, and the military and patriotic moral of Ukrainians. Прийшли окупанти до нас в Україну, форма новенька воєнні машини, та трохи поплавився їх інвентар. Байрактар. Uh, the majority of this action have a charitable goal. Uh, that's why the Ukrainian comedian, our good friend, Mark Kutsivalov, walked over 800 kilometers from Odessa to the Carpathian Mountains with the goal of raising funds for ambulance services. And with the help of donation, he raised the necessary sum. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> The humor on frontline soldiers uh, merits a conversation of its own. Many of us have been to the front lines and we bring back some kind of story from almost every trip. Yeah, for example, in Mykolaiv, we got to know a soldier with the army nickname Grandmother. Uh, you know, it was strange because he's a really big guy, he's young, strong and very brave. But everyone would say, hey, grandmother, grandma, how are you doing? Give me a high five, grandma. And at some point we just asked him, why are you a grandmother? And he answered, well, because by the time I got here all the lions and tigers were already taken. And he's like, grandma. grandma. In Kharkiv, we were represented with the stern soldiers, um, a few words, with a nickname Terminator, <laughs> who looked uh, after everyone on the world trip. At some point, we were traveling through a metro tunnel without any light, and at that moment, something metal fell into the ground. 
I asked, is that a coin? <laughs> the Terminator answered, no, it's uh, the pin from a grenade. <laughs> then everyone else was laughing and I nearly crapped myself. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Even in such difficult times, soldiers find time for humor because that it was support and charged up their souls. This is truth. Yeah. Uh, humor in times of war is often dark and bleak, but Ukrainians now have a moral right to joke. And the sketch uh, that we want to show you today demonstrated uh, Ukrainians' attitude to what has happened. Yeah, some ideas for jokes in this sketch we have uh, heard from our soldiers on the front. So uh, that's exactly what they are joking about. And we all believe that very soon Ukraine will be victorious in this terrible war. So, guys, imagine news broadcast of the future. Good evening, world. 2023 is round the corner. It goes on and on. We have no last count of how many days have passed since Ukraine's full-scale victory over Russia. And now that today had and now that today's had men lights. Volodymyr Zelensky arrived late for his speech in honor of victory over Russia Day. The reason for the 30-minute delay was that Zelensky had forgotten how to tie a tie. <laughs> but he managed to do it and gave a classy speech in his tie, which he wore uh, over a green t-shirt. Zelensky rejected receiving yet another award. The reason given was that while the Nobel Peace Prize, the member of British Empire, an Oscar, a Grammy, a Tony, and a Emmy are acceptable, but UEFA Ballon d'Or for the best football player of the year? Well, that's just too much. Yeah. Olaf Scholz uh, congratulated Ukraine on its victory over Russia. On this occasion, uh, he personally promised President Zelensky to deliver without fail and with 100% security heavy weapons to Ukraine definitely next week, and not one day later. In the hope of evading justice, the former president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, changed his appearance. He shaved off his mustache? No, he went to Thailand and had plastic surgery. He is no longer Alexander, but Alexandra Lukashenko. The former Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Sergei, Sergei Lavrov, reminded the whole world of the extensions of Nord Stream 2. It was through this very pipeline that Lavrov tried to crawl away to avoid any criminal liability. Join us now is our correspondent who was at scene of Vladimir Putin's funeral. Hello. Here are some interesting facts from Putin's funeral. Is it turned out Emmanuel Macron insisted on embalming the body in order to, as he said, allow Putin to save face at least to some extent? In fact, instead of flowers, the president of France laid at Putin's grave a telephone and an enormous portable charger. Asked why he did this, he explained, it is imperative that we continue the dialogue. <laughs> the president of Ukraine came personally to be sure of the passing of the Russian dictator, as he was president of Turkey, Erdogan, who planned and organized the funeral, one can say that Erdogan finally managed to reach his goal of hosting a meeting between Zelensky and Putin. Back to you in the studio. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Valdemar. The world continues to react to Ukraine's victory of, over Russia. The inability of Putin and Lukashenko has upset above all Kim Jong Un. Damn it! He is quoted as saying, Now I am the biggest psycho on earth again. 
Viktor Orban announced that his political decisions were wise and corresponded to the time and Unfortunately, at this point, the taxi customers stopped listening, settled Orban without tip, and got out on Budapest's main square. In Brussels, NATO decided to accept Russia as a member, so that next time Russia would attack itself. <clears throat> We will not see Ukraine in NATO for the next 10 years. Because this is exactly how long it will take the Alliance to reach the level of Ukrainian military standards. This is the news of the future and now it's time to return to the present and do everything in our power to make them real and bring closer victory of Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you. Slavo Ukraini. Uh, Thank you. Oh, oh hello again. <laughs> Thank you. All manifestations of humor in such unbelievable difficult conditions have become one of uh, of the kind of psychological support which has helped and continues to help Ukrainians not to lose their confidence in times of war. And as an example of this, here's a comment on the video of a speech from our first show since the war began. Now this, this one. I'm gonna translate it. So, uh, Finally, huge thanks for this upload. When my mom was crying in despair, I showed her some YouTube memes, songs, parodies, Bayraktar news. We laughed our heads off, we sang these funny songs, and my mom said, people who make fun of the war like this, who write these songs will never be defeated. Humor is a weapon, give us some more. Yeah. And finally, I have one dream. Think up and tell a joke which Putin hears and which make him laugh. And uh, where he will be laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and he won't be able to stop. But his heart will stop from the laughter. <laughs> and just like this, humor will defeat dictatorship and tyranny. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to Ukrainian soldiers. Thank you. Thank you. Yevhen Koshuvi is with you. Alexandra Mashlatina, Alina Blaskevich, and Volodymyr Martinets, straight from the funeral of the Russian dictator. Thank you very much. Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Glory to Ukraine, glory to Ukraine.